Lead college football analyst CBS with us here on Tiki and Tierney. Hello, Gary. How are you today? Brandon, Tiki, how's everything? We're doing well. Uh, you know, let's start with the champs here. And Urban Meyer, you know, it looks like he's going to have to finalize this very soon, maybe even today. Gary, in your opinion, the way it's played out dating back to the summer, how do you think Urban Meyer's, uh, has he done a good job with this? Well, he had a tough one here. You, you have to admit that. I mean, he, you know, he had a returning quarterback injured who was, you know, maybe the most valuable player in the Big Ten and had led his team and played so well for him. His sub comes in there and wins the national championship. I mean, this is an odd case, and he wants to be fair to both players. And I get it. it it's tough. But, you know, we all know this, that it played at any level, you know, whether it was Little League football all the way to the NFL. Yeah, that position is unique. And when things don't go right in a game like they always do, there's always going to be phases of the game where you have three or four series of three and outs or a turnover. You can't let the team have an excuse like, eh, let's try the other guy. You know, that doesn't happen with the right guard or the middle linebacker. But just like the fans in the stands are, are, are you know, are tweeting nowadays, hey, let's, let's switch quarterbacks. The players and the coaches are doing the same thing. Should we make a switch? And that's why I've never been a two-quarterback guy. Uh, I don't even think the quarterbacks like it that way because they're always peeking at the sidelines. And I think if you look, you know, some of our major franchises in college football, I think they've been paralyzed a bit uh, by not making the key decision at quarterback. Well, you know, it's interesting when you say that about making quarterback decisions. We're also seeing that at Auburn where I think the expectation yeah. uh, is, is nowhere near where they're playing. And Jeremy Johnson gets benched by Gus Malzone and Sean White's going to start. Now, I don't know anything about Sean White. Me I, you know, <laughs> and it's, but but, the, but the, I guess the underlying uh, point is that you, you have to have stability at that position, especially in college, because so many things are fluid otherwise. Yeah. Um, let me try to take a little bit of a big picture. Part of this is on Jeremy Johnson himself. You know, I mean, there's one thing of being a backup quarterback and coming in and showing flashes. We, we see this forever. But when it's your job and you have to handle all the questions and you're under the microscope and you're the leader and everything revolves through you, some guys don't handle that well. They just can't take the spotlight. You know, uh, others could. And, and you know, I'm, I, I wasn't the greatest football player, but one thing that was funny about me is I, I played better in the games and the starter and answer the questions. It was easier for me to have all those outside distractions rather than focusing in. I, Jeremy just didn't handle it well. Now, all that said, you know, the big picture here is that there are no magic wands in any sport, okay? Look at all this shuffling of coaches in the SEC and these coordinators. Will Muschamp here, John Hoke to South Carolina, John Chavis goes to Texas A&M. You know, I think the overall picture here is there's no magic wand. Talent counts, and just like the NFL, the most important position is quarterback. And right now, Auburn wasn't getting quarterback play, and Gus, for the benefit of the team, had to make a tough decision. Talking to Gary Danielson, CBS Sports uh, lead college football analyst. He's got Florida, Tennessee. That's in Florida Saturday, 3.30 on CBS. You know, Gary, you talk about leadership, right? And and obviously, the quarterback is an extension of the coach, and the coach really is an extension of, of the university. And I want to take you to Sarkeesian for a moment. And, you know, what transpired over the, uh, the late stages of the summer at the right. athletic department function, obviously very messy. He would love a mulligan, but you don't get it. You know, I got to tell you, and, and I might be wildly off base with this, but it's one thing to lose to Stanford. It's another to lose to Stanford with that on the, on your, you know, that, that, that incident on your resume. Is that double crippling, if you will? How, do, how does that impact him moving forward? Uh, we'd all like it to go back to the way it was when, in the 70s, the 80s, and 90s when, you know, uh, players could – go out to a, 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 you know, on the town and have a good time and whatever happened stayed inside the, the football offices. And, you know, when you were in college, if you did something, you were forced to run stairs and nobody knew it. Yep. Those days are over. Mm -hmm. And if, if you don't like it, don't get in this sport. It's the same for us as announcers, politicians, everybody else. Uh, we're held to a new standard. And it goes with the job. These coaches are making millions of dollars, and they represent the university. And Steve didn't do anything that hasn't been done 
a thousand times in the past what he was he was throwing red meat at uh, boosters wow <laughs> yeah know, right. big deal yeah. but when it gets out nowadays I, I had an incident just the other i think it was last year um you know i had Vern with me and 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 the people we were going to a place to have a, a, a dinner the night before and there were no parking spots so i pulled up on the grass near the the, the you know the the entrance and we parked there and you know, i didn't want Vern walking a thousand yards but in retrospect it wasn't a good idea somebody takes a picture of us you know entitled people parking in a spot and it's just you know mm. it, it, it's something innocent yeah. uh, ends up being flashed in the wrong way i don't say what steve did was innocent but it comes under a whole new light when it's taken into a context of social media yeah. gary i just hope you didn't pull up in an 84 buick at least hope you have <laughs> a good set of wheels i'm not right? a car guy I'm <laughs> You know, you, you you talk about coaches, and I think uh, a lot of them can be uh, can feel the pressure of the of the circumstances that they're under. After week one in the college football season, there were ten uh, uh, SEC teams in the top twenty five. Now, obviously, some of some of them have fallen out. And last weekend, we saw Ole Miss beat up Alabama. Yeah. I mean, Alabama had to fight to come back and make it even a game uh, uh, at the at, at the end. But when you look at the SEC and you, when you look at Alabama, the traditional powerhouses aren't what they used to be anymore. Is that to be expected, given how strong the conference recruiting has been? Um, I'm going to flip it a little bit. And I think the traditional powerhouses, for the most part, I'm not going to include Texas in there, I think the traditional powerhouses are what they used to be. What's not what it used to be is the traditional doormats of college football. Um, since I got in this thing, you know, and over 25 years ago now, um, there's been changes, obviously the spread and all the thing that goes on. But the biggest change to me is after the big guys used to take their picks, so yeah, you know, give uh, Ohio State, Florida State, and Texas and Notre Dame all the five stars because they always got them and they always will get them. They're going to get first draft picks. Well, the difference between a five-star and a three-star player 25 years ago was a golf. Now it's a sliver, mm. and a lot of it is uh, decisions and and – you know, I remember this, I, I, maybe the turning point might have been with Tiki at Virginia. Guys that weren't the most sought-after players were pretty darn good and knocked off that Florida State team. Well, there's a thousand, there's hundreds of Tiki Barbers now <laughs> that can play that were passed over by the big schools. And, you know, the other schools are saying, yeah, go ahead. I appreciate I'll, that. I'll take my guys. We can play <laughs> with you. And the competition, you know, Ole Miss beat Alabama fair and square. Yep. But Alabama beat Alabama, and it's very much like the NFL now. If you don't play your game and you give the other team a chance, they will beat you. Yeah, when you have a quarterback completing under 50% and throwing two well, interceptions, you're not winners. Come yeah. on. I mean, geez, they had two kickoffs. They give the two possessions. Not only don't they not go three and out and punt, they go no and out and give the other team the ball inside the 20. That It's hard to win like that. By the way, Gary, you're saying there's hundreds of tiki's. I'm, I'm watching my partners. and I know what he's saying in his head. Yeah, there might be hundreds of me, but they're, they're not getting into Virginia. <laughs> well, no, that, that is true. I, I'll, give it, I'll give tiki that. But I, but I will say, say this. There's not hundreds of Barnett's. Yeah. That's true. Oh, my God. Wow. This is oh, he's And, off and the you chance. know what? I, tiki knows this well, and I hope he'll take on – Join me in taking on this. The the most unique sport for longevity, the unique spot in sports on lo, in longevity, might be running back in the NFL. It's very the way true. the new rules are, where you can't really get paid until your fifth year, and you know the lifespan of running backs go maybe to thirty. Okay, um, I really think we have to look about you know keeping these unique players. I mean, Leonard Fournette, it has the maturity, stature, and body of a LeBron James. And for him to have to play two more years and take the hits, the major hits of college football before he can get in the NFL and make the pre-money before the free agency money, I, I really think somebody needs to challenge this system, and I wish that uh, Fournette would join the case and say this has to change. Why can we go one and out? He's as good as Jordan Spieth at tailback as yep. Jordan Spieth is in golf. No, you're, you you're absolutely right, Gary. And the problem is he's going to be a first-round draft pick because he's, maybe, he's, maybe. Like, he's, he's like Adrian Peterson. And if you're drafted in the first round, then the team that drafts you has a fifth-year option. Correct. And so you're stuck. That's a big maybe at running back. Our two famous cases in the conference that I cover, Marcus Lattimore and Todd Gurley. Okay, Gurley 
was very fortunate, okay? And we still don't know if Gurley's going to be the same. I mean, the, I, I just think it's totally unfair. I, I, I really do. And I don't, I don't understand why this can't be challenged and a player like uh, Leonard Fournette can't say, listen, I, I'll give you my year or two years. But but th- I'm taking hits that are unnecessary. It's Gary Danielson. He's uh, he's on the call Saturday, of course. Tennessee take it on the Gators, 3:30 Eastern. Gary, last thing for me, uh, wanted to use your your background, obviously, for the position. What do you think of two young quarterbacks? Uh, one, well, first of all, Rosen with UCLA. What are your thoughts on him? We're still trying to project him, and we're seeing snippets. <laughs> is, you know, is he a great? Is he is he the real deal? I really don't know, but the, the the first signs are that he that he is. You know, he looks like one of those, um, you know, those tennis players or golfers that have been trained since the time they were eight years old to, to you know to be uh, a, a great quarterback. And he has all of the signs of greatness. But you know, there have been others before that started out. You know, like a Jimmy Clausen career. You mm-hmm. know, he looked like he was a protege type player and a can't miss player and there's been others okay it's it's a unique position and right now he's a a a young pup who hasn't felt the pressure of the position yet and doesn't understand the what it's like to fail at that position and be blamed for things that aren't quite your fault and that all wears on you but right now he's got the physical attributes to be that what about golf from cal you know he's in a unique system and i i get a little bit nervous about those systems. You know, look at Marcus Marietta has made a smooth transition better than I ever thought he could. He's being coached really well, and he looks like he can be the great face of a franchise in every respect. I mean, he's got quick release like Aaron Rodgers, and he can be that way. Um, but that system is unique, and I'd really have to study what type of passes he's completing mm-hmm. uh, and, and how it would relate to the next level.